If you're in the market for an audio interface with premium converters, ideal for tracking, recording, mixing, and mastering, and support for Dolby Atmos mixing, Titan by Prism Sound might just be it. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to configure the Titan with Ground Control Sphere for immersive mixing. Let's go. All right, so in this video, we're gonna take a look at the Prism Audio Titan and how to configure that with Ground Control Sphere. So here we have Ground Control Sphere application. And before we do anything, we wanna ensure that our inputs and outputs are routed correctly. Sphere is a virtual monitor controller that works for immersive audio, and you can have multiple immersive inputs and outputs configured to a multi-channel configuration with your supported audio interface. So in this section right here where it says inputs A through D, I'm gonna configure three separate applications and we'll use D for the binaural mix, which is gonna to go to the headphones. The first one's gonna be Apple Music. And by clicking on this icon, you're gonna see that the input audio device is set to Sphere 16 monitor control. This is a virtual sound card. So anything that I'm outputting from my computer, whether it's Apple Music or Apple TV, is gonna get routed into these channels and it's gonna come into the Sphere application. To do that, you gotta change your main sound output to Sphere 16 Mon. Then toggle this on, you're gonna see the input meter, so you can also get a readout of the LUFS. For input B, we're gonna choose Sphere 32, which is gonna be the next virtual sound card. And we're gonna configure that with Logic Pro. So let's jump to Logic Pro. We're in Logic. We're gonna to go to Logic Pro Settings, Audio, and we're gonna choose Output Device Sphere 32 Monitor. On the IO assignments, I have this configured as a 7.1.4. And any audio that I play back from Logic, because it's using the built-in Dolby Renderer, is gonna get routed to Ground Control Sphere. Now this configuration also works with other DAWs that use Dolby Renderer as a natively built-in application. Let's go back to Sphere and verify that the input audio device is set to Sphere 32 mod. Cool. And lastly, we're gonna use input C and assign that to Sphere 64. So let's jump to our Dolby Renderer. We're gonna go to Preferences and the output of the renderer is set to Sphere 64 mod. Okay, and there's one more configuration, but I'll leave that for later. So really quickly, we have input A coming from Apple Music, input B coming from Logic Pro, and input C coming from the Dolby Renderer. And all three inputs are using the 714 input configuration, which is a multi-channel format. Now we want to assign that to our audio interface, which for this example, we're using Prism Audio Titan. On the outputs, I'm gonna select Main, click on the gear icon, and choose Output Audio Device Titan 714. You're gonna see that there are different channel configurations, including stereo. We're gonna use the 714. Additionally, from here, you have the option to use bass management. So the thing about Dolby Atmos mixing in a room with speakers is that you need to have a sub or multiple subs to manage the low end and the bass for all the speakers, including the front speakers, the surround speakers, and the height speakers. In my room, I use two Genelec subs, 7070A, that manages the bass management for all the speakers, plus it works as the LFE return from my DAW. Sphere is great because it allows you to use the built-in bass management even if your audio interface doesn't support it. Additionally, you can adjust the delay per channel, high pass filter, and EQ per channel for room correction. Now there's one important thing you need to know if you're using Titan or another Prism Audio interface, and that's the routing here. Because the Titan offers eight analog outputs, you need 12 outputs for a 714 configuration. How do you get those additional four channels? Well, this is where you select it. Channels one through eight are automatically defaulted to outputs one through eight, which is D to A or analog outs. And below this, you can choose the other outputs, digital one and two, which is SPDIF, or ADAT one through eight. In this case, I chose ADAT one, two, three, and four for the top channels, which are the left, top, front, 
right top front, left top rear, and right top rear. Now this is not something that's available by default, so let me show you where to change it in the Titan control panel. We're gonna open up the audio control app, and under sync source, you wanna make sure that the mode is set to 8 at 8. Once the mode is set to 8 at 8, you're gonna see the eight channels of ADAT displayed here, and you'll see meters in a minute. All right, cool, so we have everything configured. Let's go ahead and play some audio and make sure that everything works. So for my first example, I'm gonna select Apple Music. I got a track loaded, let's hit play and see what happens. Apple Music is playing. Let's go to the gear icon. We're receiving audio from Apple Music, or really natively from my computer. It's set to Sphere 16 monitor control, 7.1.4. This is our input. We see multimeters. If we want to get a loudness readout, we can use this mode. And the main output is going out to the Titan, which is showing all the separate channels here. So we have left, center, right, LFE, surround channels. We're skipping the SPDIF or the digital one and two. And then we see information that's panned to the ceiling channels here on ADAT 1, 2, 3, and 4. We also see that displayed in the sphere output meters, which are these guys right here. Okay, let's check out Logic Pro. I'm gonna hit play. Logic Pro is sending audio. This is head to Sphere 32 monitor. It's being received here, and it's also showing on the main output. Lastly, Let's launch the Dolby Render, and it's showing up on the output. Great. So by applying these steps of setting up your inputs and your outputs correctly, you can route multi-channel audio or immersive audio from different applications into the Sphere control panel and route that out to your audio interface with multiple channel outputs to your speakers. And it allows you to use the bass management, EQ for room correction, and also time delay, which is extremely, extremely powerful. Now let me show you one more technique and something really important that most people don't talk about, and that's called the live binaural mix or the live binaural audio feed. The binaural mix is a mix that's created by you, by the engineer, and you have the options to choose how far or how near those objects sound. I have a separate video that explains the binaural settings in depth. You can check that out. I'll leave a link on the video description below. However, the most important thing that you need to understand for this video is that you can monitor the binaural mix live while using any pair of headphones through your audio interface. Let me show you how to configure that. In the Dolby Renderer, go to Input and Master and select Re-Renders. You'll notice this option here called Binaural Live, Binaural, and it's set to channels 13 and 14. And my configuration is set to channels 13 and 14. I'm gonna click Cancel because it's already set. I'm gonna jump into Sphere, and this last input, D, I'm gonna select Sphere 64 Stereo because these are just two channels, and I'm gonna select 13 and 14. And what that does is that this feeds the binaural mix coming out of the Dolby Renderer into this virtual sound card, and it receives its input into this section of the software. Now, I don't wanna hear this binaural input on speakers. I only wanna hear it on headphones. So this is super important. Here to the right, you're gonna click Send to QA on and turn the volume up all the way and close this. And then here in the Q section, you're gonna enable the output, click on the gear icon and assign that to the Titan headphone one and two. There it is, Titan stereo, which is two channels, headphone one and two. So what this does is that this takes the binaural mix coming out of the Dolby renderer and streams it directly to the headphone output of the Titan or any other Prism Audio interface. And this is extremely important because while you're creating your mix, your immersive mix on speakers, you can mute your speakers, put your headphones on, and hear what your mix is gonna sound like with the binaural setting. And this is gonna translate to other digital streaming platforms such as Tidal or Amazon Music. So I'll go back to the Dolby Renderer, hit play, Check out Sphere, and there it is. Even though this button is not pressed, because I don't want to press it, I don't want to hear that through my speakers, I can be listening to the Dolby Renderer here. I can mute my outputs, but I'm still streaming or feeding the audio directly to the headphone outputs of the Titan. 
and that's going to be displayed here on their headphones one and two. So I hope you enjoyed this video to learn how to configure the Titan by Prism Sound with Ground Control Sphere for immersive mixing. For more information on the Titan, please be sure to visit prismsound.com. And for information about Ground Control Sphere, be sure to visit gingeraudio.com. My name is Alex from Alex Pro Mix. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you again real soon.